Praise the Lord, beloved. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much for stopping by the Lord's wonderful and most blessed uh, channel today. And uh, in this channel, uh, the Lord help us, help me to uh, uh, reveal uh, some of the secrets of the kingdom of God, some of the hidden manna of the kingdom of God. So, so that the people of God may be aware of how to receive from the Lord, how to receive what we need from the Lord, especially the Holy Spirit, the most important, uh, uh, most important, the most important aspect of Christianity is to receive God's Holy Spirit, to have God's Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Because when God is dwelling in us, then who can be against us? And if God be with us, and if God be for us, who can be against us? And when God is dwelling within us, it is at that time, that scripture that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world is fulfilled. Because when the Holy Spirit is in you, then you receive power to overcome this world, to overcome the decay, the sin of this world. You have power now to rise above your environment, to rise above your situations. You have power now to prevail against any obstacles because the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when the Holy Spirit dwell, dwells in you, it is the power of God that is also dwelling in you. The power of God, the power that is above all powers. And so, when you read the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 3 tells us this. Ephesians 3 verse 20, the scripture says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. You see, the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask him according to the power that is at work within you because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. You know, whenever the Lord is talking about what is within you, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God. That is in you, in the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is at work in you, when God's Spirit is in you, when you receive God's Spirit, then the, the Lord the Lord opened this big door for you now, this big door of infinite opportunities where the Bible, the Scripture says that you can ask the Lord and then He will give you exceedingly abundantly above what you ask Him for. In other words, He's going to give you whatsoever you he's going to give you what you ask for and even more even exceedingly more above what you ask in other words uh, uh there is no limit there is no limit to the opportunities that is now laid before you that is the kingdom of god the kingdom of god has no boundaries the kingdom of god is, is, is has no limit the kingdom of god has, has no limit Nothing can contain the kingdom of God. No space or time or human, uh, uh, or human uh, 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 limitations can contain the kingdom of God. So when the kingdom of God is within you, that's, when, that's what you receive. You receive, uh, 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 you receive an, an infinite possibilities. Everything is possible now. When the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. It is God himself that is dwelling within you. Heaven now becomes a reality. Now you can enter the kingdom of God when the Lord Jesus Christ come to take the church. Because his Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. That is what the, when the day of the rapture takes place. When God is coming to collect his children to take them to heaven on the day of the rapture. On the day of the resurrection. That is what's going to make it possible for the for the, uh, the 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 holy Christians that died in Christ. That's what makes it possible for them to be resurrected. It is the Holy Spirit that dwells within them. 
because of the Holy Spirit that dwell within them. You see. So now today I wanted to talk about uh, um, how does God anoint His people with the Holy Spirit? How does God anoint the Christians? How does He anoint us, the people of this world? How does God anoint the people of this age and the people before? How does He anoint us with His Holy Spirit? And this, the Holy Spirit, is He that we must have to enter the kingdom of God. We must have the Holy Spirit to enter God's heaven, God's kingdom. The Bible even says that it is with the Holy Spirit we are sealed for the day of redemption. In other words, when somebody have the Holy Spirit, when they receive the Holy Spirit, they are sealed with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. And actually also that is the promise. That is the promise that God had promised uh, Abraham. The promise for him to inherit uh, uh, the kingdom of the world, the, the kingdom of the earth, to inherit the kingdom of heaven. The promise that God made to Abraham that he would inherit a kingdom, that he would inherit uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven was through the Holy Spirit. It was when the Holy Spirit was given, when the Holy Spirit was unleashed by God from heaven, that's when, when the Holy Spirit came to the Jews, to the people of God, to the descendants of Israel, to the descendants of, of Abraham, you know, when the Holy Spirit was released to them, that's when God's promise was, was, was fulfilled. The promise, when they received the Holy Spirit, that is the promise. That is the promise. And, the, and that same promise is the, is the uh, is, is God promised, in that same promise of receiving the Holy Spirit, it is the same promise that God gave Abraham that he would inherit the, 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 uh, the, he would inherit the earth. He would, be, he would inherit the kingdom of God. So whenever we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about receiving heaven also. Because in the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God. In the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God. So if somebody received the Holy Spirit, that means they have received the kingdom of God. That is the promise that God made Abraham from the very beginning that he would bless the nations, with, that, he, that through Abraham all the nations would be blessed. Through the faith of Abraham, all the nations would be blessed. And this faith is in Jesus Christ. This, the faith in, in Christ Jesus, through faith in Christ Jesus, you receive the blessing of Abraham, which is the promise, which is the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, you, by extension, receive a kingdom. You receive the kingdom of heaven. That's why when you read the, in the Bible, in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 17, you read that for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive also the kingdom of God. That is the key to heaven, is the Holy Spirit. And this, the Holy Spirit you receive by faith in Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. The reason why uh, somebody must become a Christian is because and, and receive. In other words, the reason why uh, somebody must uh, become a believer and get born again and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is because that's the only way you can receive the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. It's the the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ had told us that that uh, that uh, uh, that God the Father promised him that. God the Father gave a promise, promised him that he gave him the Holy Spirit so that he can give the Holy Spirit to those whom God has called, to God's people. That's what the promise, that after Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the price for our sins, there was a, there was a promise that the Father made to him. The Holy Spirit, the Lord told us in the Bible that to wait for the promise. Terry, Terry, make sure you receive the Holy Ghost. As a Christian, we have to make sure that we receive the Holy Spirit. We have to make sure that we are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Because it's only through the Holy Spirit will we become an overcomer. Will we overcome the sin of this world? Will we overcome the deception of Satan? 
Because there's so many deception out there. How are you going to know the truth in every situation, in every circumstance that come about to face you as a Christian, as a child of God? How are you going to know which way to go, what decisions to make if you're not being helped by the helper? In other words, we need the helper. We need the Holy Spirit. He's the one that comes to help us. He wants to help us. He wants to lead us into all truth. And this leading comes through the anointing. Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible even tells you for rapture, for salvation, for the day of the rapture, the day that the bridegroom cometh to take his people to heaven, the day that Jesus Christ is coming to take his people, you find that in the book of Matthew 25 that it was the ones that were anointed that the Lord took to heaven. Jesus Christ took to heaven those who were anointed with the Holy Spirit, not the ones who were not anointed. You find that there were two churches. Two churches. You find that there was a there was a, a wise church and there was a foolish church. In other words, you find that there was two types of Christians. You find that there was a wise Christians and there was foolish Christians. And the ones that was wise were the ones that were anointed with the Holy Ghost. They sought the Holy Spirit and they found the Holy Spirit before the rapture took place. And because they found the Holy Spirit when the when Jesus Christ came, when the, when Jesus Christ was coming, when the rapture was going to take place, they were ready to enter into the wedding supper of the Lamb, because they had the uh, uh, the requirement for entry. The requirement for entry is the Holy Ghost, is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you find this righteousness. Because the Bible even tells you that. The Bible tells you in Romans, Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. You see, it's all in the Holy Spirit. So, if you want to enter heaven, you want to wear the garment of heaven, which is the righteous acts of the saints, which is righteousness, you need the Holy Spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom of God through, uh, uh, through your own strength alone, through your own actions alone. You need to receive the, 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 the helper. You need to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit to help you in your weaknesses. To help you to overcome. Jesus himself did not walk this world. Did not walk uh, 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 and live a holy life without, without the Holy Spirit. The Bible even tells you that he received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him. Came upon him after he got baptized. The Holy Spirit was there with Christ Jesus all the way through. He was never alone. He was never alone. That's why when he, when he was leaving the earth, he said that it's expedient for me to leave. Jesus said, he himself said, it is beneficial that he leaves. Because if he does not leave, then the helper will not come. The Holy Spirit will not come. And so because he left now, he went back to heaven. Now the Holy Spirit is going to be released by God the Father in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit can be there with us. To help us. He said it's expedient. That means it's good. It's, it's important. It's beneficial that he goes to heaven. Because when he goes, the Holy Spirit will be released. In other words, we cannot do this Christianity without receiving the Holy Spirit. The church uh, wants, to do, wants to do church without, holy, without the Holy Spirit. We want to be Christians without the Holy Spirit. We want to... To live Christianity without the Holy Spirit. We want to walk without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And you will not and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. You see, that means you got to have the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. In other words, you need the Spirit. You have to have the Holy Ghost. We have to have the Holy Spirit. We cannot continue to live a Christianity that is void, that is empty. Without the Holy Spirit, you're living a Christianity without, that is void, that is empty, that is without power because we lack the Holy Ghost. Power come upon us when we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that same power is the power through which that we overcome the devil. That is that same power through which that we overcome sin. Is that same power through which that we receive deliverance in the body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
There are many areas where we need deliverance. Even when we're Christians, even when we come to Christ Jesus, you find that some of us are still struggling with certain things. That only, the, and, then, and then sometimes, you know, there's certain things that only God can deliver us from. In other words, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit to come down. We need to seek the Holy Spirit and receive the power of God to deliver us. There are certain chains only the anointing will break. There are certain yoke only the anointing of the Holy Spirit will break. That's why in the scripture it says uh, 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 the anointing will break the yoke. It didn't tell you that we're going to break the yoke. It says to you that the anointing will break the yoke. The anointing. What is the anointing? The Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will break the yoke. Even Jesus Christ, when he came to deliver his people, he came to deliver his people with the anointing. In other words, with the Holy Spirit. He came with the finger of God. He came with the Holy Spirit in, all, in order to set the captives free. It is with the Holy Spirit that the people of God are set free so they can go worship the Lord. It is with the Holy Spirit that the people of God are set free so they can be healed. It is with the Holy Spirit so that the, it is the it is with the Holy Spirit that the people of God are set free so they may worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. So they may go worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. It is with the Holy Spirit that the people of God are anointed so they may walk in the spirit. So they can enter the kingdom of heaven. We need power from on high. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see, without the Holy Spirit, there is no holiness. It is impossible to enter the kingdom of God without God, without His power, without His Spirit. That's why in the Bible it says, with men it's impossible. When he was talking about salvation, he says it's impossible with men. In other words, with your strength alone, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Mark 10 verse 27. With the Holy Spirit, it's possible now to walk in righteousness and holiness. The Holy Spirit, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we need, we have to be anointed. There is not a church that's going to enter heaven that is not an anointed church. Only the anointed church will enter heaven. That's what you read in the book of Matthew 25. The wise church is the church with the oil. The church that is filled with the Holy Ghost. That is the church that is the righteous church because they are filled with the righteousness of God. Not the righteousness of their own, but the righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ that they receive when they receive the Holy Ghost. Through faith. In Jesus Christ. So, the topic of today is going to be, again, how does God, how does God anoint his people with the Holy Spirit? How does God anoint his people with the Holy Spirit? So, let us go to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, we're going to read uh, verse 24. Through 38. Ezekiel 20, 36, verse 24 through 38. So this is what we read in Ezekiel verse uh, uh, chapter 36, verse 24 through 38. And this is what the scripture says. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. So this is how he's going to begin the work. So he can fill his people with the Holy Spirit. So he can anoint them. The first thing he says he's going to do in verse 25, this is how God comes and anoints his people with the Holy Spirit. He begins first by doing this. Verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. You see, the first thing he does is he sprinkle clean water on his people in order to clean them. In other words, he washed them first. He cleansed them first from sin and idolatry. In other words, he first sanctified them. Before he put his Holy Spirit in them and anoints them with his Holy Spirit, the first thing that takes place is a cleansing, a washing, a renewal. He cleanses people from their sins and from their idols. In other words, the first things that must take place is repentance. Because when we repent, 
it's the, it, when we repent, we turn away. When we repent, what happens is we turn away from our own ways and turn to God. You know, we turn away from following our own path and begin to follow the pathway of God, the path to heaven, the word of God. So first thing that takes place is a washing. And remember, the washing is done by the word of God. This, that's in the scripture. When God wants to wash his people, he washed them with his word. So when you read the scripture, you follow the scripture, you obey the scripture. Uh, that's repentance. Because you turned away from, uh, from, from, from following your own ways. And, and, and you forsake your ways you know, and your thoughts, you forsake your ways and your thoughts, and now you, you, you finally uh, grab onto the ways of God, the word of God, and the thoughts of God, because now you are doing what God tells you to do. You are following the word of God. That's the washing that takes place. That's repentance. Repentance is, God says, okay, don't go to sexual immorality. And then before uh, we were in sexual immorality. We were doing sexual immorality. And then repentance is, uh, uh, the word of God says, don't do it because it leads to uh, to hellfire. It leads, it's sin and it leads to hell. So once we read that word in the scripture, or once it's preached to us, what happens is we, we accept the word. And when you accept the word, that means you accept for God to wash you. You know, because he, God washes us with his word. So once you accept his word in your life, you repent, you turn away from sexual immorality. What God, what takes place within you now is God come and he, he wash you with his word because you accept his word. When you accept his word, the word washes you. It washes your life. It washes your life of sexual immorality, your life of sin. So that is removed from us. So that's a cleansing, cleansing from sin. So the very first thing that the Lord comes to do to, to, before he put his spirit, so he can put his spirit on his people, so he can anoint his people with the Holy Spirit, is he first cleansed them from sin. In other words, repentance. They, first, they must first repent. He first cleansed them from, from sin and idolatry. So they must first repent from sin and also idolatry. I want you to know this. Sin. There's two things he mentioned there. He mentioned sin and idolatry, and you have to understand the difference. Sin. There are things in the Bible, when you read the Bible, the Word of God makes it clear that is a sin. But idolatry is, idolatry is anything that we put before God. So instead of obeying the Lord and following the Lord, then, then there's something that we keep exalting before Him or something that is in our life that's keeping us from following the Lord. If there's something that in our life that we love so much that we hang on to, and because we are hanging on to this thing that is preventing us from following God, from worshiping God, then that is an idol. That is an, that is idolatry. Because idolatry is, is, is something that really you put before the Lord. So when you put something before the Lord, that you put that thing above the Lord, you love that thing more than you love the Lord, that's idolatry. That's also worship. Worship. You know, whatever you're exalting so, so high in your life that it takes the place of God in your heart, that it's starting to become first. You know, that's a worship. You are That's a worship of that thing. So the, the, the moment we start to do that, that uh, that's idolatry. You know, and so sometimes instead of, uh, instead of, uh, uh, Instead of uh, uh, obeying God and, and listening to God, instead we go and, and, and pursue uh, uh, certain things. And, and when we go and pursue certain things, instead of pursuing the Lord, whatever we're pursuing, instead of pursuing the Lord, we're pursuing that thing, that becomes, that becomes idolatry. Idolatry comes from the love of this world. That's why idolatry comes from the, the idolatry comes from the love of this world. That's why in the scripture, in the book of First John, First John, uh, the book of First John, chapter two, tells us to not love the world or anything of it or anything in it. Do not love the world or anything in it. If anyone loves this world or anything in it, then the love of the Father is not in them. In other words, if he's, the scripture is telling you the love of the Father is not in people that love this world then that means what is in them. 
The question is, what is in them? If the love of the Father is not in them, then what is in them? What's in them is the love of this world. What's in them is idolatry. You know, so the scripture says, we have to love uh, the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our strength, and with all our mind. That is the first love. First love. The Bible didn't say to love the world, to love the things of this world, to, 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 no, it didn't say that. Because that's idolatry, you know. So, it's, the first love is this, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. That is the first commandment. That is the first and the greatest commandment. That means the very first thing that should be before us is God Almighty. Our eyes should be fixed on the Lord. Our focus should be gazed on the Lord. So when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we should see with our eyes, with our spiritual heart, with our spiritual eyes is the Lord. When we go to bed, the very last thing that should be in our mind is the Lord. In other words, the Lord is everything. The Lord is the first, should be first in everything. Everything we should put the Lord in front of us. The Lord should always go before us on everything that we do. He should not be behind us. He should be before us. In other words, before we attempt to do anything, the Lord, we must first consult the Lord. We must first consult the Lord. The Lord must first, we must first consult him and see if this is something that the Lord agrees or with. If this is something that the Lord wants us to do. If this is something that agrees with the spirit of the Lord. Because there are things that we can go and do that does not agree with the word of God. That does not agree with the spirit of the Lord. So when we go and, and do things that do not agree with the Lord, that without consulting him also and it doesn't agree... That means we are choosing those things over the Lord, you know. So we have to choose God first. That's what that's what the love of the Lord means. We choose God in every situation above everything, everything. God is always first. You know, that is love. The very first love is to put God first in everything. He's the first love, you see. So, so um, there's a lot of idolatry in this world, a lot of idolatry. Because the people love this world and they love the things of this world. And those are the same things that's keeping them from coming to God. The love of, of, of money, you know, keep a lot of people away from coming to God with all their heart. Because their main focus is, is, is uh, the treasures of this world, you know. Where their focus should have been the eternal treasures that do not pass away, which is the treasures that God is offering us. From his kingdom from heaven you know there's a, there's all the idolatries in this world a lot of things in this world that people love you know it keeps them away from receiving the the, the, the Holy Spirit the anointing of the Holy Spirit is that um, the love of, of, uh, of not only the love of money but the love of the things of this world the entertainment of this world you know many people seek entertainment because the flesh you know, the flesh loves entertainment. The flesh that we all have loves pleasure, you know. So that's why the Lord Jesus tells us to crucify the flesh. You know, when you crucify the flesh, you crucify it so it does not because you, you crucify it so it does not become an idol. So it does not take the place of God in your life. So it does not take your heart from God. You know, so when, you, when we crucify the flesh, you know, the pleasures of this world, we must die to the pleasures of this world. You know, we must crucify it. There's many pleasures that, is being, that, that this world is offering us. And that is the kingdom of Lucifer. That's what the devil is offering a lot of people, keeping a lot of people from following God. Is the pleasure of this world. The entertainment industry. You know, the, 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 the movies. You know, many times he keeps flashing that on people's eyes. And they're in their homes. When they come from home, they come from work. They get home, they sit down, you know. They can't wait to, to settle down and, and watch a movie or watch a, a football game or watch a soccer game or watch a, 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 a whatever a, a entertainment that they can fill their fleshly desires with, you know. So the Lord is calling us to die to, to entertainment. The Bible even tells us that, uh, that in the last days, one of the signs that we are in the last days, and that means the days right before the coming of the Lord, is that men will be lovers of 
pleasure rather than lovers of God. Isn't that how a lot of us are today, even Christians? That's why sometimes we have to ask ourselves, are we really born again? Do we really have the nature of Christ Jesus in us? Do we really have God's Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit really dwelling in us? Because the way we're living, we live as people of this world. We love the things of this world We love more than we love God. We love pleasure more than we love God. Many of us don't like to spend time with the Lord in prayer. You know, many of us would rather spend more time on our cell phones than we do with prayer. Many of us would rather spend more time with anything else or anybody else in this world more than, we, more than the time we spend with the Lord. You know, so then you have to ask yourself, who is our first love? It is, is it the Lord or is it this world? Is it the Lord or is it this world? What do we love the most? Is it the Lord or is it this world? So many things the devil's offering. So many things. So many things. You know, social media is one of the big, big things that the devil is using today to steal the hearts of men from God. Because, because of social media, because of the entertainment you find on social media, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the um, many places, you know, on the internet, on the phone, on the television set. The radio, many of the things that we are we, 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 we are latching on today is for entertainment. You know? A lot of things that people do is because it is entertaining, it, it pleases their flesh, you know. And then we spend more time doing those things than we spend time seeking the Lord. We spend more time on social media than we spend time seeking God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. That's why many Christians today, many of us, we fail, we fail to reach the marker of God where God can say, I will anoint you with my spirit. You know, many of us Christians, we Christians, we are, but we are not anointed. We are not anointed to, to our full measure. We are not anointed to our full capacity to what really God created us for. You know, we have a capacity of receiving the Holy Spirit on a full scale where God can fill us fully with the Holy Ghost. The, you read that even in the Bible where there were people like us, human beings, that were full of the Spirit. Full. You know, full of the Holy Spirit. Nowadays, we the church, we're not even full of the Holy Spirit. We have a measure of the Spirit, meaning like we, we, we're filled to a certain level, but we're not full. We're not full of the Spirit. The reason we're not full of the Spirit is because of these things. These things, these, the, the pleasure of this world. We refuse to die to this world. We refuse to die to sin. We refuse to die to idolatry. We refuse to die to, to many things that the, off, the, that the devil keep offering us. Many of us would rather focus our energies on this world than we do in the kingdom of heaven. You see, we spend more time doing other things than we do seeking the Lord. You see, seeking the Lord so he may anoint us with his Holy Spirit. Many of us think that once we, once we, oh, we're not doing certain things, oh, we're in the right way. There's more to the kingdom of God than that. Because the Bible says Jesus is first. First, 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 first. You know, he is first. So that means 